If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth, and the way that they can have life and have it in abundance? Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who He is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? You guys ready to worship? Amen. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we'll sing Everyone sing Is Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. Holy is Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Again, church, we stand and lift up our hands for the Lord of the Lord is my strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we'll sing. Everyone sing, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled sing and together we'll sing everyone sing all the ears of Lord God Almighty the earth is filled with his glory all the ears of Lord God Almighty the earth Filled with His glory, what a what a joyful song! I think you know. I think that that uh, can raise some spirits there, especially with with the uh, if there's a heaviness. That's a good, always a good time to start with a real nice song that, that can uplifting and is worshipful to God, and and He hears that worship. You know, Amen. How many times have I turned away? The numbers that say 
as the sand on the shore. But every time you're taking me back, and now I pray you do it once more. Sing it again, church. How many times have I turned away? The number is the same as the sand on the shore. But every time you're taking me back, and now I pray you do it once more. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. How many times have I turned away? The number is the same as the stars in the sky. But every time you take me back, now I pray you do it tonight. Sing it, church. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. I just love some of these songs that from yesteryear, didn't, don't you? I mean, I, these, this is kind of like where God has done so much in my life. And is, it gives me these beautiful worship songs for reminder. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can have my heart, you can have my heart, oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart, you love me with no reservation. You're not looking for perfection There's no need in me pretending I'll give you everything I'll give you everything You deserve my full attention Nothing less than my devotion Speak to me and I will listen I'll give you everything I'll give you everything Oh, 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 oh. You can have my heart you can have my heart oh, 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 oh You can have my heart You can have my heart 
give it to them, church. Be the Lord of my emotion. Set me free from selfish motives. Search me till there's nothing here. I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. Oh, oh, oh. you can have my heart. You can have my heart. You can have my heart, you can have my heart, sing it like you mean it, whoa, whoa, you can have my heart, you can have my My heart is yours forever 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 My heart is yours forever. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. Oh. Oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart. Oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart. Can I have my heart. Just continue to worship right there where you're at. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we just, oh man, we just love you, Father. God, we sure need you, Lord. And we just thank you this morning. It's awesome time to worship you in song and praise, Father. I can feel your Holy Spirit this morning. I thank you for that. What a privilege. What an honor, Father. What an honor that we have to know you, to love you. Heal the hearts of your people this morning, Father God. And we know that you're in the midst right now, Father God. And we're going to forget about what's going on outside, Father God. We're going to leave everything at the altar right here this morning, Father God. And we're just going to just love you this morning in the fullest step, Father. We're just going to just praise you this morning, God. Right there you're at. Just continue to continue to praise him. Continue to praise him. Thank you, Father. We're in no hurry, Father. We just sit here and just bask in your presence. Father. Standing here in your presence. In a grace so relentless, I am one by perfect love. Wrapped within the arms of heaven, in a peace that lasts forever, sinking deep in mercy's sea. I'm wide awake, drawing close. Stirred by grace and all my heart is yours. 
all fear removed. Breathe you in, I lean into your love. Oh, your love. When I'm lost, you pursue me. Lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all. So beautiful. Oh, here in you, I find shelter. Captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide awake. Drawing cold, stirred by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I read you in, I lean into your love. Your love so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I seek. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. Your love so deep is washing over me your face is all i see you are my everything jesus christ you are my one desire lord hear my only cry to know you all my life i'm wide awake drawing close Stirred by grace and all my heart is yours. All fear removed. I breathe you in. I lean into your Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, amen. You may all may be seated, and Pastor Alfonso knows is going to bring a wonderful word in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm glad a few of you are happy to be here. And the rest of you, we're going to keep praying for you, okay? Amen. Wow. What an amazing weekend it has been. What an amazing time we've had. What an awesome, awesome weekend. Yesterday, I just want to give a special thanks to Pastor Ed. Pastor Ed brought an amazing, amazing, powerful message yesterday. And I'm like, that's Ed. That's how we do it. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to give a special thanks for all those that served yesterday, especially my wife. Thank you, babe. I appreciate you and I honor you and everything, babe. Thank you. It's not easy being married to me. Let me tell you that much. It's not easy. So I want you guys to continue to pray for my wife because my wife gives up so much of herself to serve others alongside me. and. I'll always be grateful for that, babe. Thank you. Thank you. Because if it was just me, we would be eating hot pockets. You know, we'd be, a, we'd be in line at the microwave, you know, throwing our hot pockets in there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets one, you know? But because my wife is involved, 
she gives us actually some a healthy balance, you know, some kind of snack, but has to go with fruit, and then, you know what I'm saying? Add a little bit of vegetables, so she puts lettuce. Amen. Praise God. So, so awesome to be here in the house of the Lord. We want to welcome our guests this morning, our guests that have been here for the first time. I want to welcome you guys here this morning. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Like I always say, the first time you're our guest, the second time you're no longer our guest, you become our family. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just pray and hope that uh, this morning the words that the Lord is going to speak by the power of the Holy Spirit to us is going to really puncture our hearts and really give us a new perspective of what He's trying to do in us and each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, right now we just come before Your Holy Throne. We thank You. We praise You. Holy Spirit, have Your way with us this morning. Have your way with us this morning. Teach us and guide us in all truth. I pray right now and I bind the spirit of offense. Has no place in this place today. Father, that we are open to receive chastisement. Whatever it is that you need us to hear, that's what's going to be heard this morning. Father, right now we thank you, we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Last Sunday at this time, I was at the airport in Dallas, running crazy because I left my phone in the restroom. At this time, I was looking and I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing last Sunday. And then, my gate was like a mile away. And I'm like, oh man, I had my backpack and my suitcase. That's how important my phone was to me that I left my backpack and my suitcase there and had to travel back another mile to the bathroom. I didn't even think of the backpack and the suitcase. I'm like, really? What's wrong with you, dude? Because my wife wasn't present. She always, babe, do you have your, do you have your vitamins? Babe, do you have your phone? Babe, do you have your handkerchief? Babe, do you have your shoes? Babe, do you have your hair? And I'm like, it's all there. Amen. She has like a checklist before I leave to work in the mornings, you know. She's like, babe, because for real, it's like every time I leave, I have to come back in for something. All the time. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? And, and so my wife created this checklist and we just check everything off. Amen. Praise God. So, but enough about that. Last Sunday, last weekend, I had the privilege and the honor of going to an event that was life transforming and really lit a fire under me because there was about anywhere from 30 to 40,000 men at this event, which there should have been a lot more because this event was advertised throughout the United States. You know, and this event was at the, where the Dallas Cowboys play. And, um, you know, it holds about 110,000 men, 105,000 men. And, but if it was a Cowboys game, believe me, it would have been packed. There's a problem there. There's a problem there. there are, uh, men, our men are asleep. And God has called me to wake them up. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But through this, through this trip, I met a really, really good friend from Washington State, a retired state trooper by the name of Clint. He, I mean, we just hit it off. I mean, we met, I met him the first time, at, when I, the first day of the event. And um, we had a chance and an opportunity to share testimonies and share stories. And, and it was just an awesome, awesome time. And he's been following us since. And uh, so, so that was, it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time of a fellowship. And then yesterday was just another, another amazing day. Amen. So today's message is the power of the blood. The power of the blood. Do we know how much power there is in the blood of Jesus? Do we know that the power of the blood of Jesus took away the sins of the world? Not just the United States, but the sins of the world. It just goes to show you and demonstrate to you how much power there is of the blood. 
But we don't hear that these days, right? We don't hear that. Let me tell you why we don't hear it. Because the blood offends. Jesus offends. So we want to tickle everybody's ear and we want to tell everybody what they want to hear instead of what we need to hear. But let me tell you, church, that this morning that what we need to hear is what's going to get us from point A to point B and not keep us in point A. Sometimes we're running in circles in point A, not knowing what direction we're going. Why? Because, oh man, that message was just so hard. I need to find a new place to go. But we need, we blame it all the time. We blame it on the pastor. I'm just not growing. I'm just not growing. I've been to seven different churches and I'm just not growing. Maybe the problem is you, not the one that's bringing the word. It's because we, when, when people take us out of our comfort zone, it makes us go crazy. It makes us go nuts. It makes us freak out, in other words, right? See, the blood of Christ is not a subject we hear much about. Even though it affects every one of us, the way we live and the way we die. See, Jesus' blood, in the Old Testament, there used to be blood sacrifices to cover our sin. Jesus' blood took away our sin. That's the difference. That's the power of the blood. See, the heart of the, heart of the gospel is recorded in 1 Peter 1, 18-19, where it says, you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Wow. And then in verse 21, uh, 20 and 21, it goes on and says, it says, he indeed was for, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who's you? Point to yourself, say, you're you. Yes. No, say, you're you. You guys will get it later, okay? Just, just go along with me. You guys are going to be driving later and like, I got it. I got it. My phone's going to be going off with text messages. I understand it now. That's okay. In verse 21 it says, Who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. We have a problem. There's a problem in our society. And there's a problem in our world. Do we know what that problem is? The problem is sin. Sin's the problem. Sin is what's killing the soul and the body. Sin is. And the only way to get rid of that sin is by the power of blood of Christ. The problem isn't the coronavirus or this other virus that's going on or the one after that one or the ones that keep coming up and coming up out of nowhere. The problem is sin because more people are dying because of sin than any other disease or any other sickness. So the real problem is sin and that's what we're, we're purposing to get to the root of the problem and the problem is sin. But the awesome thing about it is that we're going to come to an understanding of knowing what kind of power the blood of Christ has. Amen? Before we can appreciate the greatest, the greatness of our redemption, we must understand the seriousness of our sin. We have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that that sin exists. When I was so involved in sin, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I like, I can quit whenever I want. I just enjoy it. No, it's because I was entangled in sin. See, sin paints this pretty picture. Sin makes it, makes everything look so beautiful. Right? And then there comes that day 
that penalty day, the consequences of that sin. If we belong to Christ and repeatedly sin against God, we can expect His, expect His chastisement. See, God wants to correct us because He loves us. How many of us have children that we correct? Do we do it because we hate them? Because we're out to get them? No. But when the Lord corrects us, we tend that, we tend to believe that He's trying to get us. But He does it because He loves us. He wants to redeem us back to Himself. By the power of the blood sacrifice, He emptied Himself so that we can be filled. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what restored my marriage. But see, Jesus is first interested in restoring your relationship with Him. When that relationship is restored, then the other relationships will just happen automatically. And He's going to restore the healthy relationships, not the toxic relationships. Because sometimes we live a certain way and we're so used to that way of life and we have so many toxic relationships around us. And we're like, we want God to restore all of those. No, no. You don't want God to restore all of those. Because most of those are toxic. We don't want to go back while He wants us to minister to them. You know what? You can pray for them, believe God for them, pray for their families, but you don't have to hang with them. And then we get to this place that we're like, man, how come nothing changes in my life? Because we continue to do the same things over and over and over again. See, in order to have change, we need to start to go repent of our sin and turn around. Start going a different direction. If we are not saved, we face His judgment. Because God hates sin. We cannot take it lightly, joke about it, or rationalize and excuse it. Sin comes in many forms, but it is always an act of disobedience to God that separates us from Him and brings all kinds of painful consequences. And a lot of times, we don't see those consequences right away. Sometimes we don't see them for years later. And we think that we got away with it. Seriously, that's our mentality. We think that we got away with it. And then when it, boom, when it comes, and the Lord wants to restore you, and He wants to heal you, we're like, man, I've been doing good. I go to church, and I serve, and I do this, and I do that. See, God, God will deliver us from the bondage of sin. But we got to understand that there's still consequences that we might have to face. The nature of sin, it deceives. And we keep sinning while telling ourselves that God loves us and understands. Then we have been deceived thinking that we are the ex exception for sin's consequences. We're like, well, God understands. Me and God, we have our own relationship. Right? How many of us have heard of that? Yeah. Me and God, we have our own relationship. He understands me, and I understand Him, and we just connect like that. You're deceiving yourself. You're blinded by the scales that the enemy is putting over your eyes that's not allowing you to see the sin, the reality of, of your sin. Sin disappoints. Sin always promises to satisfy, but the pleasure is only temporary. In the end, it always disappoints. Always. It disables. People who sin against God lose opportunities and sometimes even their health and relationships. 
Furthermore, a believer who lives in sin will never become the person God desires to accomplish what he's planned for him. It's kind of hard to connect with God if we continue to entangle ourselves in sin and not take advantage of the blood that has been shed for us. But hey, that blood is to take away your sin so that you can go and sin no more. Jesus said, go and sin no more. But we still keep playing around with His grace, thinking that we can get away with it. And we're not going to get away with it because there's going to be consequences to pay. Sin is a depressor. If a person continually lives in sin, it will have a depressing effect. Even going to church or taking a prescription medication will not help depression that is caused by sin. Although the sadness may be hidden with a cheerful expression, it continues to sap the life and vitality out of the one who refuses to forsake sin. All God wants us to do is repent. All He wants us to do is repent and turn away from it. And the awesome thing that that that, that takes place in, in, in doing so is that God says, okay, today is a brand new day. We're starting fresh today. What you did yesterday is no I'm not no longer holding it against you. Today we're starting a fresh day. That's what the blood, that's the power of the blood. That's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? Wow, that is amazing. Sin is demonic. True to his nature, the devil will do his best to entrap us in sin. It's okay. It's okay, I mean, you've done good. You've done good for this whole month. You haven't looked at porn. You haven't cheated on your wife. You haven't done this. You haven't done this. You haven't drank. You've done good. You deserve a little break. You deserve a little break. How many of us have heard that voice? Right? You deserve a little break. You always, you always go to church. You serve and everything. It's okay. You miss this Sunday. It's all right. But do we know... When we miss the opportunities that God has put before us, it's an opportunity that we may never get back. It's a word that we may never receive again. Because that day, that specific day was made for God to speak to you in a specific way, but you chose to stay home under the covers instead of coming to receive the word that God has for you. That's what I do. I mean, I purpose not to lose out on opportunities. That's the power of His blood. That's the power of His love. Sin, it's destructive. Although sin takes many pathways, they all ultimately lead to the destruction of people, families, marriages, children, jobs, and the future. It brings death. Sometimes it's a gradual, de gradual death, or maybe it comes in an instant. But the Bible says that those who sin will die. Ezekiel 18:4 and Romans 6:23. So let's go to Ezekiel 18:4. The word of the Lord says, "Behold, all souls are mine." The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. And then in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord because of the blood sacrifice that was shed for you and I. I mean, if you ask me, that's pretty good news. That's really good news because God wants to redeem us back to Him. He wants to bring us back to relationship with Him. He's like, you know what? What happened yesterday, let yesterday go. We can't change what happened yesterday. I can't change the kind of husband I used to be. But I can change the kind of husband I am from this day forward. 
Sometimes we continue to be caught up in our past instead of just letting it go. And say, Lord, your word says that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed. All old things have passed. Everything becomes new. Isn't that awesome? I know it's awesome for me because I'm like, I needed to have a new man. There is no way I could have continued to live the way I was living because believe me when I tell you, I prob probably wouldn't be here alive this day. How many of us have a prayer closet? Just to let you guys know, I'm a product of prayer. I'm a product of prayer. This woman right here prayed for me when, when I was falling down and when I was drunk out of my rear end. She still prayed for me. Even though she didn't like me that much then, she still prayed for me. And it took a very long time. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes we don't see that we think that God is not working, but God is always working. He's always moving. You know, everybody says, oh, the Lord is moving. He never stopped moving. He's always moving since the beginning of time. He's never stopped moving, but now we can see Him move. Why? Because those, those, those blockers, are, are those, those scales off of our eyes are taken off. Now we can see Him moving. Before we couldn't see Him moving, but God has never stopped moving. Just as you guys are aware. So what is the saving power that brings forgiveness of sin? Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. How many of us are holding right now unforgiveness for others? And why do we do it? Because we think we're entitled to it. We want God to forgive us. We want God to, to free us from, from the bondage of sin. But then again, we can't forgive those who hurt us. It's difficult. I know it's hard. Because I had to go through it. I had to face those challenges. But see, when we learn to forgive, when we... It frees us up. The shackles will fall us off of us. If the people do not receive the forgive, whatever, we, but we have to follow what God says. So that we can perfectly receive His forgiveness for, for us, for our lives. Unforgiveness, harboring unforgiveness is like a cancer. It's just killing you little by little. We can tell you what forgiveness has done in, in our marriage, in our relationship. That will just blow your mind. It killed us physically. Especially my wife. From so many things. Because unforgiveness is like a stronghold. It grabs on to us and doesn't want to let go. And it keeps telling us, you know what, you're entitled because they were very bad to you. They treated you like garbage. You're entitled to, to act the way you act. But look at how we treat God. Look at how we rejected God. We've denied Him how many times? We didn't just deny Him three times. We deny Him all the time when we don't stand up for His Word. We don't stand up for our faith. We don't stand up for our belief. We're denying Christ. Oh, don't talk about it here, Pastor, because, you know, it's my work. It's my work, and people get all freaked out when you mention Jesus. Well, let them get freaked out. I don't get freaked out. People get uncomfortable, and let me tell you why. Because the name of Jesus that's above all other names exposes sin. And those demons start to tremble. That's why they don't like it. I mentioned Jesus at my job, at the store, wherever I'm at, it doesn't bother me. When, when I got hired, 
I let them know that they were hiring Jesus too. When are we going to get to that point that we're going to take a stand for our faith because we're going to have to be making some critical decisions here pretty soon? Are we going to really stand on our faith or are we going to fold like everybody else and say, oh no, it's just, it's just no. No. We have to take a bold stand for what we believe in. We have to take a bold stand for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not everybody's going to agree with us. Not everybody's going to love us. It doesn't matter. Jesus said they hated me, so they're going to hate you too. See, my treasures are being built up in heaven. Those are the treasures that I'm concerned about. Not these earthly treasures here. Let me tell you one thing. I've had everything. Nice homes, nice cars. What everything I've wanted. Money in the bank, money in my savings. I've had it. What did it do for me? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just wanted more. And I just wanted more. And I wanted more. I was never satisfied. I want more. What more do we want from the Lord? He gave His Son to shed His blood for us. Because even though we were sinners, Jesus seen that we are worthy of His blood sacrifice. We are worthy of His blood sacrifice. Even when we were stuck in our sin, deepest sin, He says, He's worthy. He's worthy. I know He's hooked on drugs and I know He's going through all these things and hooked on pornography, but you know what? He's worthy. I'm going to die for Him too. That is the power of His blood. That is the power of Jesus. That is the power of His sacrifice. And He did it for you and I. Why? Because of His love. His love. His love. See? Sometimes we see ourselves that we have nothing to show. We have no value. But let me tell you, church, that there's a lot of value in us. A lot of value. Because Jesus did not die in vain. He died for a purpose. Why? Because of the investment He was making in each and every one of us. His blood was an investment for you and for I. Because He seen value. He seen value in us. You know, Sometimes I get tired of, of hearing this, especially being preached behind the pulpit saying, oh, we're just unworthy sinners and we're just... No, no. Whether you're a sinner or not, you are still worthy. You are valuable to the Lord. That's why He died. Oh, I'm not unworthy. Uh-uh. I used to think I was unworthy. They used to tell me I was unworthy, even behind the pulpit. But I came to the conclusion that I am worthy. And each and every one of you are also worthy. The same Jesus that died for me and shed His blood for me, He did it for you. He's seen value and worth in each and every one of you. There is value in you. There is value. A lot of value. I see such beautiful faces here of God's hand just knitting you and putting you together and, and just Wow. When Adam and Eve first sinned, the Lord made garments of skin to clothe them. In this way, He demonstrated that the death of an animal and the shedding of its blood was the cost of covering, atoning for their sin. Covering. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. See, the Lord taught the Israelites that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Offer the blood on the altar to make atonement for their sins. Without it, there was no forgiveness. The thousands of sacrifice offered through Jewish history pointed to the final sacrifice, the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, whose blood would be shed for the forgiveness of sins once 
once and for all to take away your sin forever and ever and ever and ever that He remembers no more. Jesus didn't die and then, then say, here, here, here's my garment, put it over your sin. No, He says, I'm shedding my blood to take away your sin forever and ever. But that doesn't mean that we can continue sinning and continue falling into the same hole. And we're dealing with issues in our life, we need to correct them. We need to come under a body to, to where they can guide us and help us get to that place. And we have to purpose. One thing I heard uh, Pastor Jude say a while back, King David. Okay. You want to know a man that really had a repentive heart? It was King David. I mean, this man, we're all familiar with him, right? He was a warrior, but he was a man that still lived in the flesh, that committed adultery, that was in sin, did all these things. But he really, really repented out of his heart to the Lord. But you know what was so awesome, though? Is that David was not a repeat offender. He was not a repeat offender. Us, we're repeat offenders. He forgives us, and then here we go again. And more power we have now because the Holy Spirit indwells in us. And we have more power now to be able to overcome sin, to not fall into that temptation. It's, so, it's, it's, it's necessary that we come and gather together in an assembly so that we can hold each other accountable, so that we can love on each other, so that we can pray for one another. So many people say, oh, like, we're the church. Which we are. This is just a building. So people use that excuse to jump from study to study to study, and they never grow. They're not held accountable. See, we, we don't want to be. It's important that we get rooted and grounded in a local body so that we can hold each other accountable. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Why? Because we need to hold each other accountable. You guys need to hold me accountable as much as I need to hold you accountable. There are four words that describe the work of Christ's blood in God's plan of salvation. Redemption. How many of you have watched the Redemption Hour? With my beautiful wife, Patricia. You know, the redemption hour has it, been awesome. We've gotten a lot of messages, and it's weird how God has moved just through, through that. And now we did. We just like have a conversation with each other and share with people how we've overcome obstacles in our life and how we're overcoming them now. How God has redeemed us. And it's an awesome time. We have a lot of fun, me and my wife. And the hour goes. And sometimes, like, you know, we're busy and stuff. We don't have anything planned or, or we don't have a study put together or nothing. And we're just like, well, let's just go on. And that's when the Lord works out the best. You know? So it's awesome. Redemption. We are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The unblemished, spotless Lamb of God. To redeem means to purchase something back. We had been sold into bondage to sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve. But Christ bought us back for God with His own blood. He purchased us back. He's like, man, they used to belong to me. I need to do something. I need to do something. Just imagine the conversation that God was having with his son. Like, son, I mean, like, whatever it is, your will. But you know, Jesus was praying. He says, if by any means this cup can pass me by, let it be so. But let it not be my will, but your will, my Lord, my Father. He was young. He was, he was just getting going in his ministry. He still felt pain. He, feel, he, felt, he felt what we feel today. 
we feel pain, we feel betrayal, and we feel all these kind, different kinds of emotions. He knew what he was getting himself into. But think of this. He did it with you in mind. If you weren't in his mind, he would have probably backed out, but, but you were in his mind. I was in his mind. We were all in his mind. How many of you have watched that movie, The Passion of the Christ? That doesn't even do justice what our Lord went through for you and I. Very difficult film to watch, but it kind of brings a little reality to the story. And wow. And then again, we deny him. We deny him. We deny him. And we deny him. Colossians 1, verses 19 through 23. For it, for it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now He has reconciled in the body of His flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in His sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Thank you, Jesus. So the first one was redemption. Second one is reconciliation. He wants to reconcile us back to himself. He wants to strengthen that relationship. To reconcile means to bring two people who are alienated back together again. In our case, it was sin that separated us from God. But when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior and in his sacrifice for us, we are brought back into a loving relationship with the Father. Which means, yesterday's history, yesterday's gone, today's a brand new day, let's do it. Let's move forward. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us. Thank you, Jesus, for reconciling us back to yourself. Thank you, Jesus, for thinking so much of us that you, this is your work. This is, was your plan from the beginning. You want, you knew, you, you right away knew what you were going to have to do to reconcile us back to you. Why? Because we're stubborn, hard headed, prideful. In Romans 5, verses 8 through 11, but God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were still in our mud, Christ died for us. When we were still rebellious, Christ died for us. When we didn't want to have anything to do with God, Christ died for us. I think that in itself should motivate us to change, to want to change. Because let me tell you that, that it changed me. It changed me. I've never been the same. 14 years. 14 years in the faith. 14 years. It still seems like yesterday. And it continues to change me day in and day out. Day in and day out. Because His Word is full of so much life. But it's also full of so much correction. And he continues to keep us down that straight and narrow path. Mud in verse 9. 
Much then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You know, in verse 10 where it says we, that we were once enemies, being enemies of God, it's like, you try to grasp that terminology, and I'm like, wow. Like, be an enemy, the one that created us? Like, wow. Verse 11 says, And now, not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Reconciliation is awesome. You know, reconciliation... The Lord caused reconciliation between myself and Pastor Drew. The power of His blood. The power of His blood sacrifice. We just need a. We're always like, I'll do this, Lord, but. I'll do this, Lord, but. Let's get the but out of the way. And you'll be doing good. <clears throat> the next one is justification. To justify means to declare no longer guilty. And the only way this is accomplished by God is through Christ's blood applied to those who believe in Him. If a person rejects Jesus, he will remain guilty of all his sin, of everything we've ever done. Hebrews 13.12 says, Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. So he wants to bring us, he wants to reconcile us, he wants to redeem us back to himself. He wants to bring us to that place of relationship. He wants to bring us to that place to where, hey, you know what, Lord, I blew it and I'm purposing to, to not do it again. I want to move forward. Just acknowledge it. Acknowledge saying, Lord, forgive me, Lord, that I have sinned against you. And call out whatever your sin is, call it out. When we call out our sin for what it really is, it brings more conviction to our hearts because we're not trying to cover it up with another name. The next one is sanctification. And I'm almost done. To sanctify means to set apart for God. When we believe in Christ for salvation, we are immediately sanctified. But even though it happens in a moment in time, it also a process whereby God continually sets us apart for Himself and transforms us into the likeness of His Son. Thank you, Jesus. Christ's blood, because it's living, continues to cleanse us from all sin. Continues is like that, that water flow. You know what I'm saying? That never ends. It just continues to pour down on you. Although we have been redeemed, reconciled, justified, and sanctified through Christ's blood, we still have sin dwelling in us because of our humanist or sin nature. We have to remove that mentality and say, Lord, remove that kind of mentality and I want a purpose to have a mentality of holiness and walk in righteousness and be careful of the kind of words that come out of my mouth like unworthy. I'm just an unworthy sinner. What can I do? What kind of, how can God use me? Look at my past. Well, I ask myself that same question every single day because of my past. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. I receive, I receive your calling. Even though the sin is no longer dominant, we still stumble now and then and are in need of fresh cleansing. This is, Part of our ongoing sanctification. 
So we've got to remember, we've got to repent, repent, repent. Turn away from your sin. Turn away from the wickedness. And don't go there no more. And if we need to find a, a prayer partner, we need to find somebody to hold us accountable, then we have to do whatever it is that we have to do to walk holy and to walk in righteousness, then let's do it. 1 John 1, 1 7 um, through 9, it says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what's the opposite of unrighteousness? Is righteousness. The blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The verb ten signifies the continuing process of cleansing that accompanies sanctification. We also have God's promise in verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This promise restores intimacy with God. It is not an invitation to live in sin as we please, thinking all we have to do is confess before going to bed. That is taking sin and the cost of Christ's sacrifice. We need to take it seriously. We need to know that the sin exists and we have to turn away from it. We have to repent from it. And we have to say, Lord, thank you for giving me this day today. Thank you for blessing me with this day today. Thank you for revealing these things I need of change in my life. Thank you for building new, healthy relationships around me that are going to help me grow in the Lord, that are going to help me and guide me in the right way. That's what we all need. Yes, even me. And I'm going to close with this. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, have you ever been in a, in a shower, like been working all day long and you're just like so sticky and you feel like dirty and you're just like, oh man, thank God for water. Right? That's exactly what the, the blood of Christ does for you. It cleanses you. It cleans you. It purifies you. It makes you holy before the, a holy God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome, the power that there is in the blood of Jesus? The power that there is in that sacrifice. I don't know what is it. We came in here with the heaviness this morning. I don't know what it is that you're dealing with, but God knows. And the Holy Spirit keeps bringing it to your mind constantly and constantly and constantly. Why? Because He doesn't want you to continue to live through that pain. He wants to help you today, this morning. He wants to assure you that He's present, that He hears you. You know, <clears throat> Jesus said in John fourteen six, He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus didn't say, I know the way, I know the truth. 
He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. There is no other, no other way to the Father except through Him. I don't know how we were raised. I don't know what we believed. But unless we believe in Jesus and turn from our wickedness and turn from our sin and come to Him in repentance, we will not see God. We will not see heaven. We will not be there. You know, today we, we're not promised five seconds from now. And we keep holding off, and we keep holding off, and we keep holding off because we think that we have so much time. But we don't. See, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. And I want to encourage you this morning that if you've never given your heart to Jesus, if you've never given your life, if you never surrendered your heart, your life to Jesus, he wants to receive you this morning. He wants to turn things around to you. But He wants to have your heart. He wants to have your surrender. You know, the Lord's tugging on you. I would take advantage of the opportunity. We're dealing with something. We want to bring it to the Lord. We've got to take advantage of it. The Lord wants to cleanse us. He wants to purify us from all unrighteousness. So let's go ahead and stand. So I want to invite you. I want to invite you to come up to the altar so that we can pray for you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it don't matter. Because the Lord loves you. He loves you. I'm glad that you tuned in. I pray and hope that the message that you just heard was a blessing to you. You know, the Word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me and uh, believe in with all of your heart. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that we will be saved and the Bible also says that everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved so right now do you just repeat this prayer with me say Heavenly Father I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead to give me a new life so now Jesus I repent of my sin I turn away from, from my wicked way of living I turn my heart to you this day forward, I want to serve you, and I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray to that prayer right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church, I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.